All right, so that might not be the official Star Wars theme tune, but it still sets the scene for this scrolling text effect heavily inspired by the movies. And this is what I'm going to show you how to make using HTML and CSS. No JavaScript whatsoever. And we're going to be doing this using keyframe animations along with transforms and the CSS perspective property. It's fairly simple to make and it doesn't include much code, so hopefully I'll keep the video quite short and sweet. First off though, before you start, it would be very beneficial if you know at least the basics of HTML and CSS before you start this video. So I've got a whole HTML and CSS crash course right here if you want to learn that first of all. And secondly, since we are going to be using CSS animations, I would probably suggest you understand at least the basics of CSS animations and keyframes. Again, I've got a whole playlist on this on this very channel, so the link to this is going to be down below. And as always, I've created files for the course or the video at least and uh, they're right here at the Star Wars text repo on github I've got two different branches I've got the final files which is where all the final code lives and I've also got the starter files which is where we're going to start from so you can select whichever branch you want and then download that code by going to code and then downloading the zip file right here I'm also going to be using Visual Studio Code as my text editor of choice. I would recommend you do the same because it's really, really good and free. You can get it from Mac or Windows at code.visualstudio.com. There is also a package or an extension I'm going to be using for this called Live Server. And I'm going to show you that package in a second. All right then, so I've opened up the starter files inside VS Code and it's really simple. There's just two files, index.html, which is a boilerplate HTML file, has nothing in the body and in the head we just have a title, some meta tags and a link to a style sheet called styles.css. Inside that, the only thing we're doing is grabbing a font from Google Fonts, which is Roboto right here. So that's all we're doing. Now, if I want to preview this file in a browser, then I can right click and open with Live Server. And I can do that in any HTML file. The reason I can do that is because I installed the Live Server package I told you about a minute ago. If you want to do the same thing, go to the extensions icon over here and you want to look for Live Server. Just type it up here. It's this package. And all you have to do is click the install button. Once you've done that, you might have to restart VS Code, but after that, you can go to any HTML file, right click it and open with Live Server. That's going to open it up in a browser, which is over here. Woohoo! And there's no content in this at the minute. So now let's start on the HTML template. OK, then, so the template for this is going to be really simple. All I'm going to do is create a div, first of all, and this is going to have a class of wrapper. So in VS Code, I can just write div dot wrapper, press tab and it creates that div with a class of wrapper for me. And then I'm going to do another div inside that called scroll hyphen text. So that gives it a class of scroll text. So we just have two divs, one to wrap everything and then a second div. This right here is going to contain the content that we actually scroll on the page. So all of the text itself, right? So let's do an H1 and we'll say star. In fact, let's do this in capitals, star wars. And then underneath that, I'm going to do an H2 and this will be scrolling text effect like so. OK, so now I want a few paragraph tags as well. So let me do a P and then I'm just going to fill this with lorem ipsum. And in VS Code, I can just type in lorem and then the number of words I want, for example, 40. And if I press tab, it's going to give me 40 words in lorem ipsum. So I'm going to duplicate that by holding down alt and shift and pressing down a few times like so. So now I've got five paragraph tags of lorem ipsum. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm going to save that and preview in a browser. Yep, looks absolutely pants. So let's style this with some base styles next. OK, then, so now let's apply some styles to this so it doesn't look so crappy on the page. Let's go to the styles.css and first of all, we'll target the body tag. Now in here, I'm just going to give this a background of like a really dark gray. So we'll say the background is going to be RGB and it's going to be 20, 20, 20. And that is kind of a really dark gray, almost black color. After that, I'm going to say overflow will be hidden. So basically any text that goes off the browser 
in any direction, it's going to be hidden. So a user can't scroll down the page to see the rest of it. And that means that we can place the text under the page at the end and we can then scroll it up and they can't scroll down to see that text until it comes up onto the page. After that, I'm just going to apply a font family to the body of the font we got from Google Fonts, which is Roboto. Okay, so that's the body. Next, I want to do the wrapper, which is this thing right here, the thing that wraps everything. And that wrapper is going to display as flex. So the whole element centers on the screen. And then I'm going to say the height is 100%. And then the width is going to be 60%. And then I'm going to say margin of zero top and bottom, auto left and right. And what that does is position the column of content, which is going to be this wide in the middle of the screen and distribute the leftover margin to the left and right. So it's going to be 20% left and right. So if I save this at the minute, we should see a black screen or rather a really dark gray screen. And then this text in the middle, which you can barely see right now. So let's style that as well. Okay. So this is, oops, this is the scroll text which is this div, yeah? We want to style that. So let's grab that, scroll hyphen text, and inside, first I'm going to apply this a color. So that is one I've already prepared. I'm not just making this up as I go along. It's kind of like a yellow color. So if I preview this, okay, looks better. All right, so after that, I want to make the font size a bit bigger. I'm going to say three, VW and what that does is go off the viewport width so it means the text size is responsive for larger screens it's going to be big for smaller screens it's going to get smaller all right so it just makes it a bit more responsive the text all right so after that I'm going to give this a line height of 1.5 m's that just spaces it out vertically a bit more the font weight is going to be bold and then I'm going to say text align and I'm going to justify this. So if you take a look at the text, it's not all kind of scooted up to the right over here. There's gaps here and there. I want to justify it so that it's very square or rectangular. So I'm going to say justify right here. If we preview this now, it's going to look a bit nicer. All right. So after that, I'm going to say position relative. Okay, and that's so that later we can use the top property to move it up and down when we come to do the animation. All right, so finally, I just want to style the H1 and the H2 a little bit here so they align in the center, not on the left. So let's say down here, H1 and H2 and text hyphen align center. All right, preview that. And that is looking good. And again, the text goes off the screen, but we can't scroll down, right? Which is good. It's hidden. And then later, we're going to push all of this text down below the screen. We can't scroll down to see it. And then we're going to animate it upwards. So let's start that animation next. All right. So now the design is basically looking good and the text is fine. Let's start the scrolling animation. So the first thing I want to do is make the text scroll upwards. So to do this animation, we're going to be using keyframes. And the way we do this is by saying at keyframes and then give it a name for this animation. I'm going to call it scroll, but call it what you will. And then inside, we can either use percentages to denote the percentage of the way through the animation and the different properties at that percentage. Or since we're just going to have a beginning and an end, we can say from and to. So from and then we're going to define the properties. It's going to go from. And for that, we're going to give the top a value of zero. And then underneath that, in fact, we need a semicolon after this. Underneath that, we're going to go to and then I'll say top is going to be minus 7,500 pixels. So this is just based on the amount of content I have. You might have to switch around the numbers if you have different content, etc. So if I save this now, nothing's going to happen because we're not using this scroll animation anywhere. What we need to do is apply this animation to a particular element. Now, in our case, that element is going to be the scroll text. So all of this content right here. So inside scroll text, I'm going to say animation to say we want to have this animated the name of the animation which is scroll we defined it right here and then how long we want this animation to take i'm going to say 60 seconds but you can give this a different value if you want it to go faster or slower it's up to you 
it's going to be a linear progression instead of easing in and easing out or anything like that. And then we say forwards just so at the end it doesn't repeat the animation because by default, if that wasn't here, then it would repeat the animation. So let me save this now and preview what this looks like. All right, cool. So now that text is scrolling upwards, right? But there's a few things wrong with this. The first thing is it didn't start down at the bottom of the page. And secondly, it's also not at an angle and it's not going into the page and further away. So we need to add that animation in next. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to use a combination of two things, the CSS perspective property and the transform property. OK, then, so we have our scrolling text now, which looks OK, but I want to do a few more things. First of all, what I want to do is start the text a bit lower down the page. Now, to do that, I'm going to go up to the body and I'm just going to paste in a couple of styles. And what I'm doing is giving this a margin of 50% at the top. So it's going to push the content down by 50% and the rest of the margin in each other direction is zero. And then it's going to have a position of relative. There's a reason for this and that's going to become apparent later on. So if I save this now and come back over here, if I refresh this now, we can see it starts off the page. You can see it's pushed down and now it's scrolling upwards. So that's pretty good. All right, so the second thing I want to do is give this some perspective, give it some depth so that it can go into the page and further away. Now, to do that, we're going to use the CSS perspective property. Now, we apply this perspective property to an element to make the space inside the element 3D, and then we can use a 3D transform inside it. So what I'm going to do is apply the perspective property to the wrapper, and then everything inside that has a 3D space then. So I'm going to come down here and say perspective and I'm going to give this a value of 450 pixels. Now, the higher the number, the less of the effect. So if this was a low number like 40, this would have a much higher effect than 450 pixels. If I save it at the minute and come over here and refresh, then not a lot has changed. All we're doing is giving this the ability to have a 3D space inside it, but we've not done any transforms inside that yet. So, for example, I could transform this now to make it look as though it's going into the page and to push it further back. So, for example, I can say transform right here and I'm going to say translate in the Z direction, which is inwards. Remember, X is across, Y is upwards and Z is the 3D plane going in and out of the screen. So if I say translate Z and give it a minus number, that means go further away. So it's going to look like the uh, the text is further away from us into the screen. So first thing you need to do is spell translate correctly. And then, God, I cannot spell. Then if I save this and come over here, you can see it looks smaller. And it, it's not actually small. It's just further away into the page, right? Now, the next thing I want to do is make this angled so that it looks as though it's going into the page in that direction. And what we want to do is angle it around the X axis. Remember, the X axis is going across, right? And if we angle it around that going away, it's going to make it look as though it's going into the page. So, and to visualize that, just imagine you have like a hook on a wire going across. And if you flick that hook, it's going to go around the wire. Yeah. When it's going away from the page, that's the angle I want to give it. So if we come over here now and say, as well as translate Z, we also want to rotate in the X direction and we want to give this an angle. Let's just say 20 degrees. Save that and come over here. If I refresh, well, we can't see that that's having a huge effect at the minute. You can kind of see the angle. Yeah. But what I'm going to do is actually take off this translate Z so we can see that a bit clearer, save it. And can you see now the angle looks as though it's going into the page almost vertical, right? It's not the full effect we want, but we have that angle now. OK, so what I'm going to do is actually not code these right here. I'm going to put these in the animations themselves. So to begin with, I want to say translate Z and that's going to be zero. Oh, by the way, these have to be inside a transform property. So transform is going to start at translate Z zero. That means 
it's level on the screen. It's not further back, it's not nearer to us, it's just the same plane as the screen itself. So that's the initial Z coordinate, and let's go to the end one. We'll say translate Z here, and it's gonna go further away, so I'm gonna use, again, we need to put this inside a transform, don't know what's going on with me, and then 2,500 pixels away, so minus. So now it's gonna animate away from us into the screen. If I save this and refresh, you can see how it's going away, right? It's gonna get smaller and smaller over time. It's still going up, but now it's going away as well. It's getting smaller as time goes on. So that's that effect, that looks pretty good. We also want to have the text rotated around the X direction, and that's only gonna change a little bit as time goes on. To begin with, I'm gonna say rotate X is 20 degrees, and you can play with these numbers, by the way, if you want to. I've just found that these ones work well. And then at the end, rotate X is going to be 21 degrees. So it's a very small, subtle effect, but it does work quite well. And if I save this now and preview, let me refresh, we can see now that text is going into the screen, away from us, and up. So that's a nice effect, right? It's looking pretty good already. Now, there is one more thing I want to do, and that is to fade out the text as it gets further away. So round about here, I want to start fading out the text so it doesn't go right to the top up there and just get tinier and tinier until it's just a little yellow blob in the top. So I'm gonna show you how to fade this out at the top next. All right then, so if I refresh this, the last thing I want to do is start to fade out the text around about here as it gets further away into the screen. Now, the way we'll be doing this is by using a pseudo element on the body tag and applying a gradient to that. And that gradient is gonna go from black at the top to transparent around somewhere here, okay? So the gradient itself I've created on this tool right here and it's gonna look something like this. So this bit right here is semi-transparent, right? and it's fully transparent at the bottom, then it's black. So as the text comes up to this, it's gonna start to fade out as it goes over the semi-transparent bit, it's gonna get fainter and fainter, and then when it goes under the black bit, it's gonna be gone completely. So that is the gradient right here that we're gonna be applying to this screen. So we're gonna have that pseudo element over the body tag right here like that. So let's come over to the body tag, and I want to now say down here, body and the way we apply a pseudo element is double colon and then this is going to be after so it's essentially saying after the body at the end of the body and we have to inject some content for this to work but the content itself is just going to be an empty string after that i'm going to say the position of this is going to be fixed and all we're doing by the way here is just inserting an element from the css onto the page which is going to be at the bottom of the body but we're giving it a position of fixed so that it's gonna be lifted up to the top of the page and it's gonna be over the scroll text and the wrapper as that goes under it. So now I'm gonna to say top is gonna to be zero, so it starts at the very top. The width of this element, this pseudo element, is going to be 100%, so it takes up the full width of the screen. The height is going to be 50%, so it just takes up the top half of the body. And then finally, I'm going to give this a background gradient. So I'm just gonna copy this from my repo and paste it in. So background and paste this in. And this is just a linear gradient. So this is how we do a background gradient. So we say linear gradient, and then this is the direction. So 180 degrees, which kind of flips it. And then it's going from this color, which is the same as the background. So this is gonna be at the top. And at 40%, it's going to start going a bit transparent uh, all the way to 100%, right? So hopefully now, if we refresh, as it scrolls up and it goes further away, we should see at some point the text start to fade out and eventually disappear. And there we go, it's starting to get a bit fainter, and the further it goes up, it's now gonna roughly around here disappear. Awesome. Okay then, so there we go, cue the music. <laughs> 